Welcome to The Personal CFO. Today we're going to be talking about Skittles. Why are we talking about Skittles? I thought this was The Personal CFO and we talked about investments and retirement and taxes. Well, don't worry, this bag of Skittles is gonna get us there. You'll soon see. So first I wanna give you some statistics because you know I love statistics, so we might as well apply it to one of those jumbo bags of Skittles. Not the tiny bags, but the big family size bag. So in one of those big family size bag of Skittles, there's over 400 Skittles. And it's actually pretty diversified, right? That's a term that we've used before. Of those over 400 Skittles, as you can see in this chart, uh, there's a pretty good breakdown, right? You've got your grape, you've got your strawberry, and leading the pack is a lemon. The yellow Skittles, now those are not my favorite, that just happens to be leading the pack here. So if you open a jumbo family size bag of Skittles, you would imagine you're going to see the rainbow and all these colors. So I want you to imagine that one day you open this family bag of Skittles and it's all yellow. Or it's 410 yellow Skittles and maybe one grape Skittle. You would think something was wrong. Something happened at the factory, something happened somewhere because this doesn't seem right. You should be seeing all the colors because you bought this bag of diversified color Skittles. Now we would know this is wrong with a bag of Skittles. However, sometimes in our portfolio this is happening and we had no idea that that's what's happening. And in this case, I want to explain that to you in the context of the S&P 500 index. Now many people watching this may own it and think S&P 500, the 500 largest companies in the United States, that's fantastic, I'm diversified. Now it sounds great. Unfortunately, it is not fully true. Now, mathematically and technically, you do own a portion of these 500 companies, but what I wanna show you is that the proportion really matters. So the way the S&P 500 works is in a market cap weighting, which means bigger companies are weighted bigger, smaller companies are weighted smaller. So let's dig in a little bit. The largest company right now, and this is as of a few days ago, this will change all the time, but right now it's Apple. And Apple, if you buy the S&P 500 index fund, whether it's Vanguard or wherever, it is going to make up more than 6% of that portfolio. Okay, I don't know if that's overweight or not. Let me give you a little bit more context. So let's skip down 499 companies to number 500, because it's the S&P 500, and you have Ralph Lauren. So Apple was 6%, and Ralph Lauren, company that makes all those clothes with the great little horse, is 0.014%, not 1%, not 0.1%, 0.014%. Well, how does that compare? That means Apple is over 400 times a higher allocation in your portfolio than Ralph Lauren. Now you might be saying, okay, well, Apple's a larger company than Ralph Lauren, that's to be expected. And that's okay. The most important thing to understand is the largest holding is vastly more impactful to your portfolio than the smallest holding. So when you say the S&P 500, it may be closer to the S&P 10 or S&P 20, and you're not as diversified as you think. Now going back to that thought and saying, well, okay, so the largest companies make up most of my Skittles. Maybe that's a good thing, right? Large companies are great. Sometimes, and again, this is no indication of the future, but let's look to the past. What the past tells us is that those 10 large companies that make up the majority of the index, when you look forward over the next five and 10 years, you see them underperforming the rest of the stocks. So it's not really great news to have the majority of your money in holdings that have the potential to underperform and you're not as diversified as you thought you were. So kind of two strikes there. So to go back and pull back together those Skittles with the S&P 500, if you open those Skittles and you see all yellow or all grape or all anything with a couple of other colors, you would think something is wrong because you bought it for a rainbow pack of Skittles. But when you buy the S&P 500, you're anticipating, I think, you're anticipating diversification across these US companies and it's not, maybe, it's not what you thought it was. And to make matters worse, some of those larger companies don't have a great history of continuing to do well over time. And it's just important more than anything, as I always say, to know what you own and know why you own it. I hope you found this valuable. And as always, thanks for investing your time with the personal CFO.